I really wanted to like this movie. I really, really did. Have you seen the cast? Eddie Murphy, Jonah Hill, Julia Louis Dreyfus, David Duchovny, Lauren, even the supporting cast had some of my face. Andrew Schultz, Jordan Firstman, Taco, Young Miami. Like I expected a cultural reset, but it was anything but that. Before I'm gonna get into it, I wanna ask you if you wanna leave a comment, voice your opinion, please keep it respectful. Anything racist or anti-Semitic will be deleted. I hope you understand. Now let's get into it. Watching this movie honestly felt like I was back in 2000. But at least those movies were funny. Take it off. You take it off. <laughs> for that time. If I'm not mistaken, You People by Kenya Bears, who's also responsible for shows such as Blackish, Mixish, Grownish, and Black as Fuck, there's an obvious theme here, is currently Netflix's number one movie in the world. But that doesn't really say much because it's getting a lot of negative feedback for a lot of good reasons, if you ask me. A quick summary of the movie. So it's about a white American Jewish man who's really into African American culture and falls in love with an African American Muslim woman whose dad is obviously against interracial dating. It's a story that we've seen a million times, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if it brings something new to the table. But this movie almost felt like a parody because of the absurd stereotypes and over-exaggerations that I thought we left in the zeros, but apparently not. From the dad, played by Eddie Murphy, sitting in a car with his future son-in-law, played by Jonah Hill, playing the song N-Word in Paris, just to see if Jonah's character would say the N-Word. What's the title of this song again? I forgot the name of this song. I don't know. I think, is it in Paris? To Eddie's character again, assuming that Jonah's character can't play basketball because he's white, and then Jonah's character proving him wrong at the end. And of course, a wig had to get pulled off a black lady's head, and in this case, it was done by the mother-in-law, played by Julia, who acts like she's never been in touch with a black person and because of that, constantly seems to say and do the wrong thing. The police okay. are fucked towards black people. We've seen these tropes and jokes like a million times. It was exhausting to watch. Honestly, it had me watching the movie with a stank face the entire time. And it also got me wondering, who is this movie for? Who is a target audience? But the biggest question that I still have, why did these great comedy actors say yes to this? I really don't understand. They couldn't have, like, the money? Like, I almost can't, because the, the script, like, I do, honestly don't know. I mean, you could make an entire series about how one-dimensional white people, Jews, the nation of Islam, black people, but also black American culture are being portrayed in this movie. But in this video, I want to focus on how interracial relationships are almost always portrayed in the same way. Let's start off with the fact that most of the time, not always, but most of the time, when there's a story being told about an interracial relationship, it's almost always between a white person and an African-American person. While there are so many other types of interracial relationships or intercultural, I don't even know if that's a word, I just made it up, types of stories you could tell. Like, give me a story between a Latino person and an Arab person, East Asian and an East African person, or a Polynesian and an Irish person. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. I gotta be fair and point out that most of these movies are being made in America by Americans and people just love to tell the stories that are closest to them. So in that case, we're just gonna have to wait for a more diverse group of people to make these types of stories, I guess. Another thing Thing that they love to do in these types of movies is the whole my family doesn't approve the two families can't get along it's a very uncomfortable conversation. or the families have like no cultural knowledge of people that don't look like them and it's like don't get me wrong i know there are still a lot of ignorant and just racist people out there who are still stuck in the 50s you know like from personal experience i know that even in 2023, being in an interracial relationship can be controversial and it can be met with a lot of pushback and ignorance from the outside world. But at the same time, things are getting better. People are having conversations, people are opening up. I don't think that's the majority of people, but we gotta start somewhere. I just think that being in an interracial relationship doesn't always have to be paired with trauma and drama. I mean, look at this. It's an Irish Iraqi wedding. Chills. We still have a long way to go, but we also came a long way. Even when you look at South Africa, 38 years ago, interracial marriage was illegal. That is why Trevor Noah's book is called Born a Crime. His existence was literally a crime. That's crazy. I feel like movies like this are such a setback instead of like moving the conversation forward, you know? Like it's very one dimensional, like I previously mentioned, but if you decide to do that, at least make it funny or be smart about it. A movie that gave a very unique and smart spin to interracial dating is Get Out by Jordan Peele. You haven't seen him? Oh, he never came back here. 
Oh my God. That movie was genius. That movie was a cultural reset. Another one of my favorite is Jungle Fever by Spike Lee. Do you know, oh. No, 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 I do date black men, but I also date Chinese, Latino, Jewish, the full spectrum. That's not really mm -hmm. a consolation for this particular <laughs> well, argument it's not supposed that we're having. To be. Oh, All I'm saying this. is I know you think I should date black men, but I'm gonna date who I like. Such a great documentation of how people, especially within the African-American community, talked about and looked at interracial dating in the late 80s and early 90s. But I also loved my big fat Greek wedding. Not really interracial, more so intercultural. Still don't know if it's a word. I'm gonna keep trying it out. No, he doesn't eat meat. What do you mean he don't eat no meat? Oh, that's okay. That's okay, I make lamb. Come. This movie is from 2002. I don't know if it stood the test of times, maybe through the eyes of 2023, this movie is kind of problematic. If you're Greek, please tell me. I don't know, but I remember really enjoying that movie. And the last thing that I always notice is how these types of movies almost always revolve around the approval of the families. Even though I understand why they choose this angle, I would love it if they focus more on the people who are actually in the relationships. You know, like how do they feel? What does it expose about themselves being in an interracial relationship? Everyone who has been or is in a relationship knows that they can be like mirrors. It can show sides of you that you maybe didn't even know were there. Sides that you like, sides that you maybe don't like as much, but it makes you think about yourself, about who you are as a person or who you want to be. And when you're in an interracial relationship, I feel like it can put another layer of self-discovery on top of the layer that I previously mentioned. And I understand why they choose to focus on the bickering families and the families not getting along, but I feel like the internal conversation a lot of people have who are in an interracial relationship is just as interesting, maybe even more. I know that You People wasn't meant to be a serious heavy movie about self-discovery. It was supposed to be a lighthearted romantic comedy with some kind of like lesson or something, I don't know. I gotta say, it was definitely lighthearted, romantic at times. The lesson was lost on me and the comedy mm, was nowhere to be found in my opinion. But what do I know? It's just a thought. <laughs>